Hello everyone. Today is June 13th, 2021. It's a Sunday. This is Miss Catherine Teleradon Masters, aka Higher Wage Woman, also the TLG. I am going to share something with you all that I have rarely spoke about. And I, the things that are going on, God dang it, Death Experiencer back in 1992, but even long before that, you know, go to Facebook.com, Higher Ways, H-I-G-H-E-R-W-A-Y-S, woman, no spaces all together. Go to that site. You'll get on my page. I got some photos posted for you to take a very good look at. It's going to blow you away. Oh, God. When I was 16, I had to have, I ended up, in Elk City, I was only supposed to be here for two weeks visiting my grandparents. And my parents divorced and I, I lost my bank account, I lost my furniture, I lost my home, I lost my car, I lost everything. Divorce happened in 1977. It was Rocky Road after 1970 when my father, my parents, and my I and my three other siblings were traveling to Elk City, Oklahoma to visit my dad's parents and my mom's parents, relatives, etc. My dad was driving through Burns Flat, Oklahoma. An Air Force base that closed down back in the 40s after the wars. I just so happened to be taking an airplane out of the hangar when my father decides that um, hey, going to get a picture of that. My mom was begging, pleading, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. But, oh dear God. He's from, he's from this territory. Canute, Elk City, he's from this territory. He's going to do whatever he wants to do. He's a man. Shit. Before he got back to the car, the police, the MPs got us. Now, interesting here. Here's where it gets real interesting. Both my parents will tell you that because it was such a burning up western Oklahoma summer and it's like the temperature on a cool day, it's 110. They'll swear that we're all taken to the hangars and they interrogated my father so my parents will say, oh, absolutely. But us four kids will sit there and say, we sat on the side of that road, baking in that car, pleading, oh, will you please get our father back? It's so hot. Uh, I don't even know why they would, mom wouldn't even have the air conditioning running. That didn't make any sense to me. So our memories were that, oh, we're baking in the car. Please bring Dad back so we can get the AC on and we can get going. False memories. And after that, I was eight years old. I had a bull on top of my foot just come right up. My, so did my other siblings. Now, if you jump to 2011, MRI of that left foot, right where that bull was, you can see this spike ball, that's an implant. Oh. 
I've also seen MRIs here about two years ago of my mother's brain and because my degree, my doctorate was in radiology, I'm looking at these films and, and she's got two implants, one in the cerebellum and one that's attached to the occipital bone, the very back. Something how they can open up and heal an incision. They have the technology to do that, but they will not let us have that technology. Instead, they cut our flesh and allow adhesions to do their damage. Yeah, it wasn't be, let's see, I think it was in 2014 that an x-ray of her knee yielded another implant. You tell this was an old, old implant because the damn thing was about that big. And it was about three, four inches up above her kneecap. My, yeah, yeah. Their personalities changed so bad. It all ripped a family apart. And my God. My God, what they're doing to us all. Michael Jackson was right. You don't let them take your child out of your sight. You tell them to get a wash basin. You'll clean your own child. That year, my junior year that I had to spend here at Elk City, I hated it. Because from where I'm from, we didn't go to school all day long. No. We were much further ahead. By the time you're a junior, you've pretty much taken all your classes. You can, uh, you sat there and made your own schedule. And if you wanted to go from 10 to 2 or 12 to 2 or 3 to 4, whatever it is, or 8 to 11, not all friggin' day long. God. God, that just, I could, that was hell. That was pure hell to go all day long. But the worst part was a foreboding feeling. And I hated that feeling. It was a haunting, foreboding feeling that there was something in my future that dealt with Elk City. And I wanted absolutely no part of it. I did everything in the world to make sure that I did not come here. When I would visit my grandmother, my mamma, I didn't stay overnight here. I would come in, I'd visit two, three hours, and I was gone. That was it. I didn't care to visit anybody else. Was anybody else for me to really visit? Don't know anybody really else. Don't care for anybody else. That's it. She's the only care. She's the only care that I had. And then I had, there I worked, I was two years from having a doctorate in radiology, gastroenterology. And I had a most horrible man who was sick enough. He was very, very mentally, mentally, spiritually sick. High functioning psychopath. And because what he did, I landed up, I landed in Elk City. Oh, well, thank you, God. You just had to get me out of my right mind long enough to get me here, didn't you? 
because there's no way else she would have gotten me here. There would have been no other way that I would have come here. Oh, shit. God. Have you understand this? When you are a very advanced person, being around low resonance is a very irritating presence. I try to get out of here in the early 2012 when they took my home away and I ended up having to be with my mother again. Last place I ever wanted to be was taking care of her again. But they moved in on a psychological link because they can, they sit there and create dreams. They can invade your dreams and they can set you up on remote, these remote neurals, you know. They can take you places. They can alter your dimensions. They can raise up electromagnetic fields around you and they can, people can be walking right by you and they will not be able to hear or even know you are there. I've been put through it all. But there's this one. There's this one that keeps coming. It keeps free coming, coming. And I'm going, why? What is that? What really was that? And here's what it is. So one, when I was here and I was trying to get out, I was told that I will live right here. I will not be able to leave here. And I said, no, I won't. Yes, you will. No, I won't. Hey, nobody going to tell me where I'm going to live. I'm leaving. No, you won't. You will stay right here. Uh, we'll see about that. You know, they're sabotaging the daylights out of everything. I, so let's get to what the point that I want to talk about because this is really going to blow you away. These people came and got me. And I entered into this marble structure. And it was an incredible marble structure. Beautiful. Beautiful. It was very uh, cream and light tan marbling. It was just beautiful. They had carved it out of this marble mountain. And they led me up these huge wide stairs. Why do they always got to have such wide, wide stairs? I don't know. But they were wide. And we go up them. And they go to a room. And they open this door. And it's like I stepped into the 1940s. You know, like they show uh, in advertisements, you know, the flyer stuff. You go back, you know, they had that turquoise vinyl, you know, seat colors with the chrome, you know, piping on the side, you know, nothing fancy, you know, you see them at the burger places, you know, truck stops, etc., this type. And my mamma was sitting in one of those chairs, and she was not, she was just sitting there, kind of blank. And it's like, why is my mamma here? And then I look up, 
and I see dangling from the ceiling are these large crystals with water in them. I want one of those. One of the first things that I ever got shown and taught a lot about when I died, the first place, the very first place, and I knew where I was at, were crystals. I was not allowed to learn about crystals until after my death. And believe me, every time that I tried, I wanted to become a geologist. And <laughs> okay, that didn't work. Never, never worked out. Never worked out. Okay. Not to become a geologist. Even when I sit there and try to learn about stuff, they would take, it was like the memory of that would be gone. And I had, I had very high intelligence. I was the gifted one. Those who are the gifted one in families are the ones who get mistreated the most by the rest of the family. You become the whipping stone, even though that they're, they'll come to you begging you for help, and you'll help them, but then all of a sudden that, um, no, if you need anything, you know, doesn't matter what you do, doesn't matter. You're the whipping stone. It's like they're all in on this secret, and you're the outsider. Yeah. I was that. I was that. So anyway, I decided I went. I went with those crystals. And I got this table pulled over there, and I was about to get one. And one of them come out and told me that, no, that I couldn't have that, that that was much more powerful, and I don't know how to use it. I wouldn't know how to use it, excuse me. I already know how to use crystals, and I want that one. I want one of those. No, nope, can't have it. We have your grandfather here. And all of a sudden I looked, and here are these reptilians. And I mean, they're, they're the tan color face, and then the kind of little bit of the light green down the back. They had that kind of that dinosaur reptilian type of face. You know, and they said, well, we have your grandfather here. He has never known love. Well, I love him. I love him very much. And there's about three or four of them. And they said, well, we're going to bring him out to you. <laughs> so I expect him to see my papa brings him out and he's in reptilian form <laughs> and he's even in he's even in blue jean bib overalls which I've never seen him ever wear those never he always wore the zip up or button up coveralls. That's what he always wore. He didn't wear no blue jean bib overalls. But they had an energy that they were working on me. And they said, He doesn't understand love. We want you to help him to understand love. This is, this is him in his real form. You've seen him in human form, but this is him in real form. And I went up to him, and I told him, I said, I love you. I love you. So 
a lot that we went through the time that I was there and that I helped him and I carried a lot of weight for him and he kind of looked at the others like you know he really still didn't understand and he looked at me like he didn't understand and I said okay I'll show you and I wrapped my arms around him and I conveyed from my soul into him I love you I love you and after a bit we did, we parted and I could see him he's looking down he's process, processing things and so then they take him back into this room and they decided that well they're going to show me something else and so we go through a corridor and we come into this cave and but only now this is a it's a round area and I see this person sitting at this console and they're in the center and this is this is probably about oh 50 foot in diameter I would say and I could see like this golden light that's coming up from this from in the center and there were railings, metal railings, you know, square metal railings, so you just don't walk off into there. And I was watching this guy at this council, computer bank, and there was a deal that had come up and it said that they needed a, a specialist in this area. And this guy sits there and he puts in for a specialist in this area and this plastic card comes up and it's got a person's this guy's face his name and everything takes it and he puts it in this slot in this machine and out of this light this golden light comes this person and then I was removed that's as, that's as much as I was allowed to see. But now, my Pampa, it'll be a little later down the road that he would he would show up in my dream only in human form, and actually, he had hair. There's Snow White, and he comes to me and he goes, come with me, I got something to show you. And so he's kind of walking pretty fast, and, <laughs> and that, that was Pampa. Pampa never walks slow. He's always going where, he's getting where he's going. And so I'm trying to keep up, and all of a sudden I'm seeing these worms that are starting to fall from the sky, and it's like, what in the world? And they look like, you know, out, you know like out of a, um, out of the ocean. They were kind of cone shaped, and then on one end they kind of had like, reminds me of this, uh, like the star nose of a mole, but only it had, you know, it looked it's kind of like worm. It was more like worm like, but it had an opening to it. They could open its mouth, latch on, you know. And the more that we walked, the thicker, the more inundation these worms were. And it was like, it was getting impossible 
to try to find a place to step where you're not stepping on them. And all of a sudden, one fell and it, and it got me on my thumb. And my papa stopped, turned around, grabs my hand, reaches off, throws it down. And we keep going. And it was just like that these things covered everything. Everything. And it ends with that. That's it. It ends. And I never really understood that. But I knew that he was protecting me. And then about I think two years later, all of a sudden more gallons came out. And when I learned about more gallons, I knew exactly what. Now I understood what he was showing me and telling me. Now then, go three years, about three years later, that I was in this club here in Elk City. I just go in, let me play some pool, enjoy some pool. Chit chat. I don't drink. And uh, I'm on my way. And I had this soda in my hand. And it was about around 7, 7.30 when this group of younger adults come in. And one of them, a male, comes right up to me and says, do you know that there are crystals that have water in them? And I just about dropped that glass. I don't know this guy from anywhere. But he comes in, and that's what he says to me. Now, how does he know? How does he know about that dream? How does he know that I've been thinking about where can I find crystals like this? A fluke? That's a fluke? No. He intentionally came in. He was intentionally set, sent in. I've been, I've had a lot of these setups done to me. I've had a lot of them done to me. And there are those who will do things to see that they can't scare me. No, no. They're not going to scare me. There's only one thing in this entire world that can make me feel scared. And that one thing is very isolated at this time. I don't know why that they showed up in Reptilian. I don't know if it is like even David Icke has talked about or any of the other ones that they do not have the ability to, to experience human feelings. And right now I'm I'm getting hit with a direct energy. I just had signals that went from my left ear to my right side and went from snow to a tone. So I am talking about something that they don't want me talking about. So that just means that I'm going to just keep talking. Just had a guy try to kill me here. I call him the Satanic Mechanic, Sam Johnson, out of Sarah, Oklahoma. You know, these things that are here, these things that are here, they have to get together and work together to do things to people. I don't have to do that. I don't have to do that. 
I'm a death experiencer. I don't have to go through the law to reach people. This is a lot of things that they don't want you knowing about that you can do, that you can sit in your home and you can go into where they're at and watch them eat or play with the kid, take a bath, do whatever, even watch them sleep. Even watch them sleep. What is so important that I be here in Elk City, Oklahoma? Why is it that they want me so dead? Because believe me, they have tried to kill me so many friggin' times. Like I said, satanic mechanic Sam Johnson of Sarah, Oklahoma. Oh, he didn't fix the brakes on my truck. The seals were out. I nearly took construction workers' lives and lives in the oncoming lane and whoever was at the gas pumps. That was uh, first week in May of 2021. They're not wanting to allow it to move from a civil case because he embezzled $3,100. That's all the stimulus check. They ain't, they're not returning any of my phone calls. Oh, it's going to be a civil case. No, it's not. It's attempted murder. Because so I had the brakes worked on, I got the proof that, yeah, yeah, this piece of crap absolutely tried to take my life. Oh, it's a civil matter. The hell if it's a civil matter. The hell if it is. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember this. I get people telling me this all the time. Oh, I mean, way up high. Oh, Elk City, Oklahoma. Yeah. Yeah, what was it? Uh, the guy that always had that um, afternoon, lunchtime, that he would talk about these stories and he knows it and this is the rest of the story I can't think of his name right now but I had when I first came here in 95 that's all I ever heard well he said if you ever want to get away with murder move to Beckham County Oklahoma yeah they get away with murder false arrest Oh, they got such that which sits. Yeah, they got. <laughs> it's interesting what you find out what happens underneath the judge's robes. I don't go there, folks. So I don't get any kind of leniency and I don't get to put submit evidence against that will prove that they're lying and what they're doing inside their so-called court chambers is as illegal as it can ever get. I like to do this stuff where they come in and they take the, you set something down and it's God. Then it shows up later. Uh, that was going on back when I was here in my 1978-79 year. God dang. Don't move to Oklahoma, folks. Don't move to Oklahoma. I sat here and even I'm responsible for laws that got people their pay medicine back and as soon as Elk City and Beckham County Sarah found out about it 
Oh, wow, all of a sudden you couldn't find that info. And the next thing I know, I've got my phone being hijacked. I'm being, t I can't make phone calls out of Elk City. Yeah, I've seen the spacecrafts too. Even sitting there watching, there's one that absolutely looked like the tops of two hamburger buns put together. And it pulled apart because I was on 113 West Road, which is on Country Club Road. And I'm right next to where Falcon Road crosses with Country Club Road. And there's these new homes that are being built. And that I seen it. And it's about 10, 11 o'clock at night. I seen the lights, street lights, go out as it's. I mean, it's not their distance and it go out. And then as it's moving, well, the street lights had it comes over, it goes out. But as soon as it passes back, passes from all those other lights, they come on. Oh, well, this is not a hologram. Oh, real deal, huh? So it sits there and it stops over those new homes. And this thing pull, pulls apart. All right, not a hologram. So they're not trying to mess with my mind, trying to make me think that I'm seeing. UFO. Oh, spooky. Spooky, spooky. This ought to get a run. And she's a woman. Yeah, what could, hey, scream to that. You know how they how they portray us in the movies. Yeah, not. Not quite. I love guns. I like Jim the Farlet, ex detected from the Elk City Police Department. To return the guns that he stole from me, my Winchester, my 357 Smith & Wesson handgun. Yeah, had to prove. Nope, had to prove. He stole them. He got them. No, nope, can't get them back. Uh, yeah, yeah. Imagine that. Police officers stealing property from people. And when they come in and they show evidence, he's got them. No, trying to get back. Anyway, this thing pulls apart, and I can see it's frosted windows, and I know those type of windows. Oh, yeah, here we are. All I can see is human forms, you know, arms, legs, head, the typical human shape, you know. This one, he stops, and he turns and comes to the window, and, I, and I'm just standing there looking at him, watching him, going, yeah, I know, you can see me real clear, but... I can't see you that clear. And you just stand there. Like I just stand there watching. Yeah. I know. All those expensive homes. That's just for looks. It's what's underneath that's. That's where the real activity is. Yeah, I know that. And when I had said that, all of a sudden... It collapses on itself and then silently moves and takes off. There's also a time, because I lived at 113 West Road, and at a certain time of the morning, around 1 a.m., all of a sudden I'd hear this sound, and it sounded just exactly what the pulley on an alternator when it's going out that high screeching sound that's exactly what it sounded like and I were and I was hearing this kept hearing this at times one o'clock in the morning there'd be certain certain nights that I'd hear this and I knew that they were moving machines heavy you know could truck semi trucks military vehicles, whatever. The tunnel was right underneath Cayman Townhomes, which was magic three properties back then. I left November 2011. So I called in and I asked a certain newspaper here. I said, um, hey, anybody calling in about this really strange screeching noise happening at 1 a.m.? And I would look into it when they called me back the next day. Now I used to be an industrial electrician. 
as they're telling me. It's street lights, yeah. Sometimes the street lights, you know, they can emit a sound. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. That's what they, well, I'm sorry that they, they're playing you like that. I, you know, shoot the messenger. No, no, all right. Yeah, right. All I can think about is, hey, Charlie Sheen, the arrival. Yeah. Yeah. I was seeing lots of things that were happening. And the more that they tried to do to me, the more that they revealed. They never wised up. They never stopped. They always kept thinking that they could absolutely just make me crumble. I come in. Oh, got a six foot bull snake in my house. Okay, let's catch you little guy and let's put you back out where you belong. I want nobody to hurt you. Thankfully, we live out where we've got some pastures and farmland, you know. One day, I'm like, one evening I come in and my tomcat lured me to another Oh, somebody's been in here, huh? I walk into my kitchen in my dining room, and I've got this microwave stand. That's what it's for, you know, cabinet, cabinet, but I don't use microwaves. You shouldn't either. But, um, man, it was pulled out from <laughs> what in the world? What in the world? My Tom, my Tom was after it. And I looked underneath that thing and I tell you what, that was the ugliest, enormous spider I have ever seen. And I'm telling you flat out, ugly, ugly. But God dang, that thing was huge. I'm not sure whether my it was my Tom was the one that pushed the cabinet out or if it did. This thing was bigger than a tarantula. Had a huge old bulbless back end. I mean it was it was big. It was big. I had to get a big old bolt to get it into and Take it across <laughs> into the into the fields. I'll let you go there. Go out there. You'll find your way back to who, where, whoever your owner is. I had uh, in Texas Panhandle. I lived out on the lake, and I had this nice little tool shed. And one evening, I went out there. Something I was going to get. Now, I'm telling you, <laughs> this is like 1980, 1981, summer 1981. And I sat there and I've got a light in that tool shed. I walked in, turned on the light, and, and I was at looking at the opposite wall from the door and I hear, <laughs> and I turned around. And here is this white scorpion. It's the size of a friggin' dinner plate. Serving plate. Serving plate. Where its, it's legs touched on the other side. It was about a foot. It was a good foot. And I grabbed this bar, which is what you put in a chain link fence, and then you put the around the pole we put that clamp on it and that's what that bar holds that chain link fence I grabbed it and I jabbed at it and I happened to hit it right at the base of the tail cut the tail off I don't know what happened to to the scorpion I shot out of there and I thought I'll just wait till in the morning and I'll go out and 
get the part <laughs> that I cut off. But um, there was nothing there. It's like, um, who set that free on the property? And then you guys came in and picked up the evidence, huh? Yeah. I was building a refinery at the time in Borger, Texas. Yeah, there's a lot of things. A lot of things I've seen. You, uh, United States Air Force. Do you know people? You ought to read that. You got to read the papers that you sign. Because when you join the military and those fine paperwork words, and those fine words, you are agreeing that not only do you become property of the government, but so does your family members. And they will get to experiment on your family members. I sit there and I saw that I had a nephew that went into the Air Force and I thought, yeah, I had an uncle went into the Air Force. I could, right, well, I'm not going to say. This seems like the only military branch that is affiliated with my family, my ancestors, my relatives is Air Force. And I got Burns Flat Air Force Base. And then I was down in Altus. Altus has an Air Force Base. I was in Jackson County Hospital where I had an illegal surgery done on me where they cut me open and put these uh, huge implant devices I got. One that's coming through the abdominal wall right now. It's about the size of a golf ball. No consent of surgery. Next to an Air Force base. I have special abilities from my death experience. I've been able to heal people. And I've been able to know things and perceive things and tell things. And I don't have to be where... Be far off distance places. I'm very, very good. Nobody has my accuracy. Nobody has ever, those who have even been on TV and been doing readings for 30 some years, never seen anybody who can be as accurate as I am, nor that I can give the amount of information that I give. And I've had readings that have even lasted six hours long and never missed on a bit of it. Healing, healing people. Yeah, I, the miracle healing, full body healing, you can do that. Don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. Go to learning what you can heal from what you can find on the shelves. And then be very careful about posting any of that because I tell you, I learned the hard way that they watch and listen so close to me that what I have been able to heal people so easily with over the counters, they made Walmart completely pull their graphenicin tablets, Walmart brand. And what they put back out is pure crap. 
you ain't gonna get you ain't gonna get Guafinison. That's the one thing that will clear out your lungs. You'll cough stuff up within 14 hours. You're going to already feel a complete difference. And you're coughing up. You'll cough up all that crud that's coming from these energy fields. You see all this coloring and stuff movement. That's, that's what's killing everybody. That's what's destroying everything. Your abilities, be very careful. Be very careful what you talk about, what you can do. And I know about, I know about all the different kinds that there are. But remember one, this one thing though. They are all bound by spiritual laws. I know what many of you have had to deal with. Leave me. Hashtag me too. But I'm not the type of person that I put up with that kind of stuff. I come to heal and to destroy. I come to heal and to destroy the same abilities, energies that I use to heal, I can destroy with. I come to heal and to destroy. Those who understand that will know that you can kill somebody without having anything in your hands. Evil must replicate in the physical what spiritual pure souls can do merely in the spiritual. They have to create those things, that weapon that releases electromagnetic energy enough to hit the heart chakra to start a heart, blow up a liver, take down kidneys, all that stuff. Well, when you are a pure soul and you know that how what the spiritual laws are and that there are ways, there are things that you can do that you don't need a weapon. You are the weapon. And be very careful because one of the things that they like to do is that they like sending in people. They want to see what you will do with your abilities. And I, they, <laughs> They were constantly sending people in, expendable people. They would tell them things that they knew would get them to come after me. And I knew that what they wanted to see is if I would use my knowledge, I'll just say it that way, my knowledge. That if I could take it that far, that I could literally take a life, how could they prove it? How could they prove that I took a life? I didn't have any guns, knives, nothing in my hands. No. You see, that's what they want. That's what they've been trying to do. They've been trying to weaponize us like this. And I know that there are those... They'll suffer you. They'll get you to a point where you're ready to do it. They got me there. And I told them, I said, well, if you want to know that if I can do that, 
then why don't you send in the ones that I want and I will show you if I can do that or not. Funny. Never seen those people get close to me. It's okay. So, it's a new game since February 2021. Brand new game, isn't it? Didn't take them long to sit there and have somebody try to take my life and steal a lot of money from me. And my God, oh, how are they? They're going to protect him. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. He's in the he's in the satanic brotherhood. Satanic mechanic Sam Johnson and shaking that ranch at me. You don't know who you're messing with. You threaten me, Sam? You don't know who you're messing with. You're threatening me. You're really threatening me. So I call, get the police up there. I said, I want a receipt, Sam. I suppose all this work that you just did on my truck. I never met a woman like you for it. I said, yeah. Yeah, I, just, I believe that. It's one. I'm the first woman to ever be a roustabout foreman in the history of American old gas oil fields. I ran crews of men in the Texas Panhandle. Built most of the oil field. So yeah, I believe that. I'm also an auto body tech. I've also built one of the fastest street racers in 1970, from 1977 to 78. Or 70, no, 78 to 79 here in Elk City. Roger McDonald and my boyfriend Brent we built it. Nobody could beat that Trans Am. Nobody. I used to be. I did all my. I did all my mechanic work. I built. I helped friends build their street. Their well, ask drag cars. Yeah. I know what you did. He used a good friend who had got uh, a personal recognition award from Governor Kevin Stitz. He used him and showed him fake parts so that he'll call me and go, yeah, yeah, you know, this needs to be replaced. He didn't know. He didn't know that satanic mechanic Sam Johnson was lying and using his, his integrity and his notoriety. But you'd think that the DA, Andrew Marcy, would uh, sit there and not tolerate somebody who is taking advantage of people and putting them in high-powered machines with faulty brakes on them. It's a civil suit. Like hell it is. It ain't no civil suit. He just bumped this up to attempted murder. This is criminal. I won't press the charges as long as he does what he meets my agreements. Anything mechanical, and I mean anything mechanical, anything that truck needs, he fixes. And then there's going to be several thousand dollars he's going to put back in my hand. And then I'll go on my way. Then I'll go on my way. But let's see. Let's see what they do. Reptilian. <laughs> God. God dang. This is where you know that when you get back to the realms where you come from, that you sit there as a woman, that you go, <laughs> God's gonna, 
it's going to be two things. One is before I return there, I'm going to haunt the hell out of some places, people, because I'm going to absolutely tear their li their lives apart before I get back up there. And then when I do get back up there, this male god, he ain't going to be as happy to see me as I am him. I'm going to tell little Junior Jesus stand outside the door. Your father and I are going to go in there and have a talk and depend upon his answers. He's going to decide whether you still got a father or not. You know, not one church sits here and preaches Jesus and God and that Bible. And I was with God in Christ when I died. But not one, not one will ever let me talk, come and talk to them about being with them. What does that tell you guys? What do you all think about that? Anyway, thought you'd be interested in this story. Still disturbs me every time I think back on that cave and that putting in that name and that card coming up and, and out of that light came this person. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Better not be the way that this world works. Be interested in your thoughts, though. What do you think about that? Kind of made me think about the pyramids, because I know the pyramids are portals, tombs. God, everything's tombs. Yeah. We advanced, they haven't. They're still going, yeah, yeah, we made this great archaeological discovery. They just slaughtered everybody back then, too. Yep, just all through the ages, everything was just slaughter. Slaughter's here, slaughter there, crazy kings, you know, crazy men, yeah, yeah, everything's, everything's men, all the problems been men, you can go back even reading it in Enoch, every, all the problems are men, men were just desecrating everything, men were having, were defiling the women, men were sitting there doing whatever they want to, and it's men this, men that, all the problems been men, it's almost like, well, you know, reading all this, don't blame me. Don't come after me on this now, because I'm only reading the, reading what's there, what they put out there, what they're teaching, preaching, and saying, and everything. But it, to me, it seems like God's biggest problem was what He's created man. Cause they sure don't like us women. They sure don't like us women. They sure hate us women, don't they? I figure that's because spiritual energy is feminine. I don't know, folks. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm sure sick and tired of hearing all male deity this and male this and male that and male everything. They literally, it has put us in an offset world. It's unbalanced. And so now, now that we've got really good men entering this world. And um, they're having to deal with what Hollywood has projected and infected the minds along with the military and government. And they haven't balanced it all right. So we sure got a lot of the younger ones taking their lives. 
Anyway. I don't know, folks. I don't know. I know that there's fixing to be an unveiling happen. And that unveiling, the veil, the real veil, is the electromagnetic field is coming down. That's what they're after. They want to see the construct of this planet. And, um, yeah, there, there are billions other Earths. There are. I thank God. We just got to stay stop them from going in and raping planet after planet in the habitants. But anyway, leave a comment, feedback, tell me what you think. I would enjoy hearing what you think. And um, maybe we can figure some of this stuff out together. Maybe there's things that you would like to ask me that you'd like to find out. Because I don't have a problem telling the truth, especially when it's people who are being beaten up. Having such bad things done to them and they're good people. Those are the ones that I care about. Those who are doing the, off the offending, lead poisoning is a, I think it's a good way to get rid of them, honestly. Y'all take care. Stay safe. Get together. Be careful. Listen to your soul. Your soul will tell you. Your soul will tell you when when to go, when not to. You'll get a feeling about things. You follow that. You follow that. And remember, when you're pure soul and you have been one of good integrity. You have developed powerful integrity. That integrity is everything because that gives you the right to walk among the gods and the goddesses and be denied not. It's everything. And it will tell you because you've got because you've taken care of that, you'll know when you're in the midst of those who aren't. Yeah. Take care everybody. Give a like. If you would subscribe. I'm gonna try to give you everything that I know. So I got there. This is getting thick down here, too, in Elk City, Oklahoma. You know, before I go, did a pedophile case. And I said, you know, I don't know who's all involved in it. I know who the main characters are. But I don't know who all is involved in it. The only way that I know who the rest of the pedophiles are are those who don't do what they're supposed to do. So if they are in positions of politics, power, law enforcement, and judges, etc., 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 and they don't do what they're supposed to be doing, what the law dictates, and they want to sit here and they want to make things harder and tougher on me, then they... They reveal themselves. There's the pedophiles. There you know it. So, yeah, there's been a lot. Let me tell you what, pedophilia, you're all learning just how big that is. Just how far up it goes. So, they don't do right by me. Oh, they're, they're a pedophile. You betcha. You betcha. Take care, everyone. Talk to you later.